Live from KTTC, the area's most watched late news, this is News Center at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. We begin with the latest on the six suspects who are arrested in Rochester in a child pornography investigation. A UMR college professor is among them. The suspects are accused of possessing and distributing the porn, one and even greater crime. New Center's Ali Killam is live outside Rochester's Law Enforcement Center with the latest on this developing case. Ali? Tom and Robin, according to police, the investigate the the arrests have been made over the past four days after a 10 month long child pornography investigation involving multiple law enforcement agencies. Now, one of the suspects that's in custody tonight is facing more than just charges for distribution and possession, but also manufacturing child porn. Beyond these doors, heinous crimes are alleged to have been committed. According to the Rochester Police Department, 58-year-old Mark McGinley of Rochester was arrested and charged for possessing and distributing child pornography. He is also being accused of creating child porn with a victim known to him. It will likely result in federal charges against the individual. By tracing IP addresses and file sharing activity on computers McGinley used, officers discovered multiple files of pornographic videos and photos of children, some as young as one year of age. These images are real kids. They're kids that have been victimized, uh, have been abused, in some cases tortured. Um, and uh, it's, it's a very serious crime. And it's a problem that most people don't realize uh, is taking place in their community. Officers also arrested 20-year-old Lucky Chang. According to a criminal complaint, he admitted to downloading child pornography. Officers found multiple pornographic images of children on his computer. Also in custody is 20-year-old Dennis Ook for similar acts. Police report Ook is charged with two counts of distributing pornographic files and 10 counts of possession of videos and images featuring children as young as five years of age. Sherwin says it's not uncommon to find thousands of videos and images on perpetrators' hard drives. It's, it's amazing. I mean, we, in some instances, we literally have um, a half dozen computers with terabytes of data that uh, are all containing pornographic images involving children. Three other men have been arrested in these cases, 52-year-old Mark Pine, 29-year-old Evan Erickson, and 47-year-old Christopher DeZutter, an organic chemistry teacher at University of Minnesota, Rochester. But the investigation is far from over. You know, oftentimes, these, uh, the, the possession and distribution of child pornography leads to other behaviors by the suspects, and we want to make sure that uh, we're not uh, missing any victims in our community or outside of our community. Now, the question remains, who are these victims? Officials don't know the answer to that question, but are investigating any possibility of local children being at the center of these crimes. Now, each of the suspects has been or will be charged with multiple felonies, and more arrests are possible in connection to this investigation. Reporting live from Government Center in Rochester, I'm Allie Killam, KTC News Center. Ellie, thank you. A man imprisoned in Rochester for working for a Somalian militant group has now been released from federal prison today, but remains behind bars tonight in Albert Lee. Amdifada Yusuf Issy was convicted in 2013 for recruiting for the terrorist group Al-Shabaab in 2007. Issy spent the last two weeks of his sentence in the Federal Medical Center here in Rochester. After being released today, Issy was taken into custody by United States Immigration and Customs Enforcement. He is now being held in the Freeborn County Adult Detention Center and Elbert Lee while his future is being determined. His attorney says they are working on resolving the immigration issues. Now, if Issy is not deported and allowed to remain in the United States, he will be highly supervised for 20 years. A weeks-old baby is taken to the hospital after a bad crash in Rochester. This happened around 4.30 next to Bamber Valley Elementary School. The Rochester Fire Department says the car was waiting to turn into a driveway when a pickup truck slammed into the back of it, crushing in the entire backside of the car, as you can see in the video there. The damage was inches away from the baby's car seat. Rochester Fire says the baby was taken to the hospital to be checked out, but thankfully is doing fine. No one else was hurt in this crash.
The Minnesota Department of Revenue has stopped accepting tax returns submitted through TurboTax. The department says some Minnesota taxpayers recently found that when they went to log on to TurboTax in order to file their returns, they saw that a return had already been filed. Well, due to the potentially fraudulent activity, the department has stopped accepting returns from the popular tax filing program. Officials are reviewing returns already filed through TurboTax. They will be talking with the program's parent company and the developer in to it tomorrow. It's a bummer for a lot of people mm. who use TurboTax. Yes. Anyway, we're going to get away from taxes and on to uh, Please. something <laughs> sure. else happy, like the cold, bitter weather out there. Today. Not well, so bad tonight, is it? The, I mean, compared to the, last The little it, um, hearts are still going back and forth. Yeah. Right 10 now. to 15 degrees warmer right now than it was right. at this time yesterday. So it's not bad. It's a start. <laughs> it's a yeah, start. It was cold this morning, too. Yeah, we were down to 17 degrees below zero at the Rochester Airport. Many locations hitting that 15 to nearly 20 degree below start to the day. But now we're above zero. It's nine degrees in Dodge Center, Austin, and Rochester. Same with Decorah. It is eight in Preston and Mason City and 12 in Owatonna. So we're a little bit warmer there. But our wind chills are running just below zero. But the wind chill itself isn't even as cold as our actual temperature was to start the day. That's live from our list. Cena siding and windows sky cam in downtown Rochester on this breezy night. The winds have at least started to back off a little bit. Our sky is clear for now. Now there are clouds out in western Minnesota and the Dakotas and as they come our way they will be thickening up tomorrow and we'll look for a mostly cloudy sky through Friday but it'll be a little warmer tomorrow with a high of 28 which is right on the mark for this time of the year. Our average high is 25 degrees. We stayed at 11 for a high today, but we'll hit the upper 20s tomorrow, even 30s this weekend. But even with a huge warm-up compared to where we were today, there's still the possibility of a little bit of ice this weekend. So we'll talk about that drizzle potential in just a few minutes. Okay, thanks, Randy. You're welcome. Well, two people are arrested after a search warrant was executed at Vista Village Mobile Home Park in Brownsdale yesterday. A full report is pending. However, 39-year-old Rebecca Charlson has been charged with possession of meth amphetamine, marijuana, and meth paraphernalia. An unidentified man was also arrested. Two children at the residence are now staying with relatives. Charleston is expected to appear in Moore County Court tomorrow morning. A local lawmaker introduces a new bill to help uh, to help alleviate the burden that's put on farmers by property tax levies. DFL Senator Lyle Cornyn of Clara City and Republican Representative Steve Drazkowski of Mazeppa introduced the Minnesota Family Farm Protection Act today. The bipartisan bill will help uh, equal out the responsibility between taxpayers living in the city and those living in the country when it comes to property taxes used to pay for school construction projects. According to the two lawmakers, <laughs> under a hypothetical $27 million Dover EOTA school bond, the average homeowner pays around $4,000 while the owner of a 300-acre farm would pay just under $40,000. Under this bill, when a school, a county, a city, or a township passes a construction levy, a family farm will pay property taxes toward the new building based only upon the values of the ho their house, their garage, and one acre of land. Drazkowski, who is a farmer himself, says the bill is especially important because of how hard farmers have been hit by corn prices, especially lately, making it more difficult to turn a profit and being hit even harder by property taxes than their city cousins. A Minnesota state representative is trying to lower the legal drinking age to 18, but with provisions. Representative Phyllis Kahn of Minneapolis introduced legislation that will allow 18-year-olds to drink at bars and restaurants. The other part of the bill would allow a child of any age to drink at a bar or a restaurant if accompanied by a parent or a guardian that approves. The purchasing age would still remain 21 for anyone buying alcohol or liquor at liquor stores. Kahn says that there is a big problem with binge drinking among 18 to 20 21-year-olds and hopes that lowering the drinking age will allow them to learn to drink responsibly. Well, you know what they say, everything tastes a little bit better with bacon. Ah, so true. Well, <laughs> and that was certainly the case tonight as Bacon Fest 3 kicked off in Rochester. Bacon Fest is an annual fundraiser in association with uh, Winterfest. It benefits Sunset Terrace Elementary School. Three local celebrities were all in the running for the title King of Bacon, including our very own meteorologist Ted Schmidt. Sunset Terrace <laughs> teacher Nate Dietzman was named King, and although Ted didn't end up taking home that crown, there were no real losers at an event with so much good food.
There's no better way to raise money for our kids at Sunset Terrace than through people's freakishly strong love of bacon. There is bacon, there's tater tots with bacon and cheese, there's bacon wrapped scallops. I mean, we've got the whole gamut. We even have some bacon gelato that is really good. <laughs> <laughs> she bacon loves gelato. her bacon, doesn't yeah, she? Yeah, I don't know about that one. <laughs> well, the chefs at the Kaler Apache cooked up more than 500 pounds of bacon for the event. Why were we not there tonight? I don't know. Well, because we were yeah, entertaining we inter viewers. Yeah. Yes, yeah. well, still ahead. The daughter of an area ice hockey coach is fighting on stage for breast cancer. Yes, yeah, she's got a lot of people helping her along the way. We're going to have her story coming up. You're watching the KTTC News Center with Tom Overly, Robin Wolfram, Chief Meteorologist Randy Brock, and Sports with Pat Lund. This is KTTC News Center at 10. The Grosso family has been an institution in the Mayo hockey world for so many decades. They have. And Marisa, uh, uh, excuse me, nine months ago, Marisa Martin, the daughter of the head coach, Lauren Grosso, came down with stage three breast cancer. Tonight, the Mayo community came to her aid at the game against John Marshall. New Center's Mike Sullivan was there, and he joins us live now in the newsroom with the story. Mike. Tom and Robin, Marisa Martins played softball at Mayo and has watched her father coach the team to well over 600 wins. Tonight, her father's team let her know that they have their back. Sound the Spartan war cry. A battle is beginning. Only not between two hockey teams, between a woman and her fight with cancer. You have cancer every second of the day, and you think of it every second of the day. Something might distract you here and there but then it comes right back to that, and there's something that reminds you of it. Marisa is the youngest daughter of Lauren Grasso, the winningest coach in male hockey history. For nearly 50 years, the family has bled green and gold. But for this game, the team is adding a touch of pink for her. She's had so much support and feels so confident in what, you know, what's going on, and she has a lot of hope. Long before the kids sharpened their skates, oh. Marisa's oh, mother yeah. battled cancer. My mom had gone through it as well uh, nine years ago, and I was pregnant with her. And so it was somewhat familiar, but for the most part, it was new to me. Like all Grasso's, she won. Now her father is rallying Marisa and the rest of the hockey community to do the same. We really appreciate everything that's been done. This has been a very uh, fragile time for us, very tender time. From pink sticks to special pucks, the community is responding, coming to the aid of their fellow Spartan, letting her know the battle has just begun. I don't have any other choice, and it just seems easier than I thought it would be. Just, I don't have a choice. Let's just go for it. And Marissa has gone through chemo, radiation, and surgery. The mother of two still has one more surgery to go this year. Live in the studio, I'm Mike Sullivan, KTTC News Center. Um, we wish them all the best. Yes, we they do. They are a really wonderful family yeah, in this community. Lauren aren't taking, they? Yeah, his, her father taking to the yeah. ice tonight, Lauren Grasso. Such a great story. Thanks, Mike. It's Mike. Still head to not another brutal day for Tiger Woods. Pat Lund has more on that, plus news from the Iowa Hawkeyes, my alma mater. That's coming up a little bit later on in sports. And it was a biting wind today, but it's backing off. Uh, we have a little warm up in store this weekend. We'll have details on that and the moisture coming with it coming up next. Quite a few car batteries were grumbling this morning. If you even turned over as we were starting the day at 17 degrees below zero at a number of stations and then the teens below in all. But now right now compared to where we were yesterday at 10 p.m. It is 15 degrees warmer in Rochester than it was at 10 p.m. yesterday. 29 degrees warmer in Morris, Minnesota. It's considerably warmer back into the Dakotas and Nebraska. Thanks to this movement in the jet stream, the coolest air now is going to stay bottled up into parts of eastern Canada. We've got a ridge moving overhead. This is what a ridge looks like right there. The winds just uh, aloft pretty much uh, north to major or snowstorms. West. We haven't had one yet this year, and the one that we just had a couple days ago, that's, yeah. that's the best we could offer up. And that mm -hmm. wasn't too bad. That was about really four inches of snow bad. for many of us. Plenty. Yeah. 
Just yeah. plenty. Enough. <laughs> Enough to shovel. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, sure. Randy. Well, still ahead, the second largest health insurer in the country reveals that they have been hacked, leaving hundreds of thousands of customers with stolen information. In light of the latest breach, the U.S. Senate committee met today to discuss ways to prevent any more breaches from happening. Their ideas coming up. Hackers have stolen information on tens of millions of Anthem customers in a massive data breach that ranks among the largest in corporate history. Anthem, formerly known as WellPoint, is the second largest health insurer in the country. Everything from names, social security numbers, street and email addresses, as well as employment information has now been stolen. The company says so far there's no evidence that credit card or medical information has been compromised. The company will offer free credit monitoring and identity protection services to impacted customers. The FBI has been called in to investigate. And in light of this latest data breach, a Senate committee held a hearing today to discuss possible legislation that would help protect consumers and their data. This morning, committee members discussed measures to prevent breaches in the future and how to make sure victims are notified of the event that their sensitive information is compromised. What they proposed was federal legislation that would regulate the way companies handle personal data and notify customers of security concerns. The committee also spoke to the vulnerability of U.S. credit and debit cards when compared to chip and pin systems. Uh, what we have in both the, in the environment right now are, are credit card numbers and pins that are static numbers that make us vulnerable. Uh, and I think that the, to the extent that we develop technologies such as, as tokenization where numbers are meaningless, uh, if someone was to breach uh, target and capture all the numbers that were associated with those transactions or any retailer. Uh, the numbers would be meaningless because they'd only work for that one transaction. The hearing was the second of several that are expected on the topic this year. The Albert Lee wrestling team went for the Big Nine championship tonight at Mayo Highlights are coming up. Plus, JM and Mayo met in hockey. Also, it's been a long time since the Iowa Hawkeyes have defeated Michigan on the road. What you doing there, I'm Robin? celebrating. You're celebrating. <laughs> Tonight's sports is coming up. <laughs> The Iowa Hawkeyes have struggled lately, losing three in a row tonight on the road in Big Ten action, and they don't play well at Michigan, but tonight was a different story. The Hawkeyes were tough. Aaron White with the two-handed jam. Then here comes Jared Utoff right down the lane, splitting four Michigan defenders for another two-handed finish. So that's White again. Iowa ended the Colton Lampert of Caledonia, scored 29 points tonight. Spring Grove, Samantha Bratlin pumped in 27. That's a look at sports. We'll see you tomorrow night on Sports Extra, Dover Iota and Chatfield. Well, I know Tom is guilty of this, singing and dancing in front of the mirror. Yeah, every afternoon. Yes. Well, one police officer actually is taking all that to a ne the next level. A Missouri police officer fires up his video <laughs> equipment and checks it by singing and dancing in front of his patrol car. Yeah, it's kind of bizarre. The uh, Smithville Police Department released the video on its Facebook page, <laughs> and it has already earned thousands of likes. So far, no word on who the police officer is, but he sure knows how to entertain a crowd. I love it. Good for that him. That is actually kind of funny. Do, do you think they just, they're continually replaying that thing or is that what he just kept doing? I don't know. Probably has that on every dance day. Moves. What, what are your dance moves? I don't moves? have any. I want to see these guys' no. this dance moves. Pratt's, Pats would be on the gridiron. Retired. Hmm? He's retired. You retired yeah, from dancing? A couple of years ago. That's probably a good thing. <laughs> be sure to catch New Center today tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Good night. You only know. <laughs>